What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again. And, of course, I've got Callum with me. Obviously, you've seen him before. He was on the channel last week. Uh, give a really in-depth video in players he would like to sign. Well, not he would like, but that fans may want to sign for their football club. It was a really good video, in-depth. Clearly knows his shit. Probably shouldn't be on our fucking channel because, <laughs> I mean, he, he clearly knows not fucking more than I do. Um, before we start and before I introduce Callum properly, uh, remember, guys, the FCA Awards I would like a nomination. Link's in the description. All you have to literally do is go on Twitter and type at Blue Boys Network nominated for uh, best content creator or whatever. Um, and then at FBA, FCA Awards, I'll, I will literally put the thing in the description. I'll literally put it in the description. You can't fuck it up. OK. Uh, Callum, welcome back to the channel, my friend. How are we? I'm good, mate. It's weird. Like I said before, we think this is our first time ever speaking to each other over face to face instead of over WhatsApp. So, you know, don't expect it, it, the Captain straight to be fucking brilliant. As you've seen, I've just interrupted him there already. So this is probably going to be shambles. It's fucking sound, mate. This is the way <laughs> me and John used to work. He would talk, I would talk over him. You talk, I'll talk. Over. Look, mate, that's how it works. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on the channel. Obviously, um, what a lot of people don't realise is, is we have been having conversations now for about eight weeks to try and get some general football content on the channel. And that's why I asked Callum and I asked Sweet and Sour Soccer. And it's about, for me, it helps me get another video out, get a consistent flow of videos, get some general football content on by people who know what they're talking about. Although you'd probably argue Sweet and Sour Soccer maybe not after their tier list. However, <laughs> look, don't dig them out too much because they are good lads. Um, and it helps, hopefully, Callum either build up a portfolio of work or um, he, he has got his own, you have got your own YouTube channel that I don't necessarily think you particularly push too hard. So this is an opportunity for you to get some of the subscribers over from my channel onto yours and to start generating your own content because that's what we're about on the Blue Boys Network, supporting each other. So do whatever you need to do, my friend. My resource is your resource. And that's, that's how that works. Cal. What are we talking about today, my friend? Yeah, so as you know, you saw it last week, it is pick of the Prem. We basically, we go through the Premier League, um, we pick things. It's as simple as fucking that, really. But um, we're literally, I've got six clubs here that I think have a chance to steal that sixth place. To, to be honest, I think Leicester have got fifth place at minimum locked up already. So I've got six clubs here. So basically, I think it's the six clubs that finished six to ten or 11th last time, and these are the... Yeah, 11th. Uh, so yeah. we've got Arsenal, Spurs, Everton, West Ham, Leeds, and we're going to basically rank them 5-1 to one or 6-1 to one or whatever for who are most likely to get that 6th place spot. Uh, it's we do, It's a bit probably early to do this video, but I'm hopefully on the Blue Boys Network going to do a full Prem table prediction above, just before the league starts or something. It might... Do it to get it out on the weekend before the league starts. Yeah, something. we'll all do one. We'll all yeah. do one. All the content creators for the Blue Boys Network, we will all do our own video with our, with our 20 predictions. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, I know I'm not encouraging betting, but if everyone wants to put a fiver in on that, then. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Fuck it up. I'm not encouraging it, but spunk your money up the wall. Go on. <laughs> that's it. Uh -huh. Right. Fucking, fucking marvellous. That's yeah, this, absolutely delightful. This is Fuck. definitely not going to be going in my portfolio. I like this channel because this is the one where I can come on and just say what I want, really. Oh, That's well, it, about yeah. it. Look, listen, as long as you are not breaking any of the rules, which is racism, sexism and, and uh, gender equality and all that, you literally can say what you like. Oh, brilliant. And, 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 and even, even they're fucking ropey when we've got John on. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Lord... Is. Lord fucking help me. So, but there you go. Yeah, but John's done it that much to this point where he just gets exceptions now, doesn't he? You just, oh, it's fucking John. There you go. It's just fucking John. He's <laughs> honest to God. He's a fucking shambles of a man. He really is. Man, I know he is, but I fucking love him from what I've watched. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you fucking do. There you go. <laughs> fucking hell. Right, come on. Let's get into the fucking video. Jesus Christ. Right. Fucking five minutes in and the poor fuckers haven't watched anything yet. Come right. on, fucking give it to me, Cal. Where are we oh, starting? I'm, 
do you know what? Let's just go in fucking table order because I ain't had any fucking clue how to do this. It'll be West Ham first, water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go on then. Right, Give so West Ham. Me. West Ham's chances of getting in the top six. Right, so West Ham. Fucking nil plus. Fucking zero, in my opinion, Cal. I know you'll yeah, be think... able to give. I know you'll be able to give me a constructive reason why they can finish top six, but for me, they could stick it up their arse and swivel. You know, you know, mate. I don't think they've got a fucking chance. That's <laughs> you know, what? Yeah! I don't... unless they can sign back Jesse Lingard, then I don't think they've got a fucking chance of finishing in the top six because. In the end, it was they have got a solid side. Rice and Suchek being one of the better double pivots in the Premier League. Kufal, you know, they love to go into the Czech Republic now and just basically take the players that not a lot of people are appreciating and turn them into good talents. You know, Mikel Antonio up front's a good stra- choice, but it looks like they've been wanting Tammy Abraham for a while, which I don't know if that's going to happen or not. You don't know when Fabianski's eventually going to lose his legs. And if we look at West Ham's transfers here, then, you know, I don't think they've done anything fantastic. And, yeah, they've made a profit. Like, what the fuck? They sold Felipe Anderson, who they bought for 30 million, for 2.7 million. So it's just like, that's that, Everton levels of business. It, to be to be fair, that's possibly worse. Any, I mean, although, to be fair to Felipe Anderson, I'm just, just, just fucking completely going off it. He was actually decent at Roma, and he was at, it was Roma he was at, wasn't it? Was it Roma he was at? What, last season or when he, yeah. before he joined? Yeah, yeah. From... Where was he on loan last season, Roma? Porto, wasn't it? Porto, yeah. So he was decent. Wherever he fucking was, he was decent. I remember I remember watching him in some game, and I thought, yeah. that. And I remember him playing against Everton when they tore us a new one and beat us 4-1 at Goodison Park. And then lost the first five games of the season, come to Goodison and managed to twat us around Goodison. <laughs> he was phenomenal that day. So he definitely had the quality. Um, look, you're right in what you're saying about West Ham, in my opinion. They've got they've got a good team. I've been on loads of West Ham channels and, and, and bigged up their channel, you know, whether it be Irons United or whoever. I've gone on and said, look, David Moyes will, will turn West Ham into Everton 10 years ago. They will be hard to beat. They will be difficult to break down. They'll be clever with the ball if they have to be. They will have creative players left and right who can deliver crosses. You know, Aaron Creswell got seven assists last season as a left back. Then you've got Soufal on the on the right hand side. Then you've got the 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 power in the middle with Declan Rice, who obviously has Suchek to to sort of mix it around. They obviously were lucky enough to get Jesse Lingard in front of those two. And then Antonio, if you're keeping feet genuinely can score you 15, 20 goals a season because he he has these moments in seasons where he looks absolutely unplayable and then he's injured for five weeks because he's broken his Achilles standing on a piece of fucking Lego. So <laughs> uh, uh, for me, West Ham have got the building blocks of a good side. I still just question the ownership and I still question what they're going to be like when fans come back and they have the fans on their back again because I think fans not being at the Olymp- whatever stadium there's is called now, I can't even remember. Olympic Stadium, West Ham Stadium, whatever it is, London Stadium. I think, I think, I think they might fall off a cliff. Personally, yeah, I, I think, think they're, I think they're going to finish about fucking twelfth. Yeah, I was thinking eleventh, twelfth, maybe because I think in the end, Moise's job is to turn them into a top ten side, not into a top six side. Well, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, he's, he's got the Everton he's job. Doing his- job fantastically and you know none of us are even mentioning Jared Bowen who might even I don't know how but he's been linked with fucking 40 million pound moves to Liverpool but I I rate him I don't rate him for 40 million pounds and look I look I I didn't rate Jota at at 35 million pounds and he went to Liverpool and he's absolutely smashed it so I can't as much as I hate as you do Liverpool I, I, I can't knock their recruitment under Klopp Really, I can't. I, I'd love to, but I can't. No, I mean, it looks like it's going to get bad with departures with Henderson and all the other contracts expiring, but yeah, it's mad, and it? it's all falling off. The are going to finish in top six, aren't they? So there's no point of saying, oh, there's a chance they might not. <laughs> Fucking course, they are. Yeah, they, yeah, they'll do. Yeah, they'll get they'll get referees' decisions to get them in. I mean, it's not that man. They finished fucking third without Van Dijk. We, we did try everyone else. We did try to get rid of him, but. Fucking hell, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Blue Boys Network. <laughs> Look, I don't condone violence, just to clarify, but fucking Cal, well, fucking hell, he speaks for no, I, I don't condone violence, but... 
<laughs> Shit's happened now, aren't they? Fucking move on now before we get absolutely bombarded by Red Shot in the comments. Here we fucking go. I, I can see him swatting them away as we speak. Up. <laughs> no, I'm, already, I'm waiting for a fucking hairline joke from a Liverpool fan already. Oh, it's marvellous. <laughs> well, hey, listen, look, don't worry about it, mate. It'll never be worse than Jorginho or whatever his name was at Arsenal. I don't fucking know. As long as they don't get to Rob Holding levels. Jovino, that was it, Jovino. Jovino. His hairline. Whoa, it was further back than the 80s, man. Uh, I might start calling myself the white Jovino. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> right. So, yeah, West Ham, I just don't... I, I think it depends on the recruitment. I think um, I think a, no, Tammy Abraham would be a good signing if they can get that over the line. And it does look like Chelsea are willing to sell. Maybe some more centre-backs because Craig Dawson had a decent season, but he also loves an own goal. It was like mm. I was saying, every time he plays, he scores. It's either a header or an own goal. You're getting one of them. And in the end, I think maybe having another centre-back in front of him may be a good idea. They've got his a D-op, but I just think they've given up hope in him. But yeah, West Ham have got a good squad, but everyone else around them, except one team in Merseyside, has strengthened a lot. And um, yeah, I just don't think they're going to have the juice. Maybe the fans coming back can rile them up, but I think if certain teams are going to spend the money they are, or are going to get the money they are from losing a certain striker, then I just think it's going to be too hard for West Ham. And I think West Ham will end up finishing around 10th or 11th in the league. The mm. next team who was 7th was Tottenham. And Tottenham's an interesting one because obviously it looks like they're going to lose Harry Kane. But if the paper talk is true, it's going to be £160 million. And there's no fucking way that club can spend that wrong. I know they did it 80 with Bale, but at least they brought Eriksen in there. There's no way you can spend £160 million wrong. You know what I mean? Unless it's going on substances that go up your nose or something like that. Like, surely the recruitment's good enough now to the point where they can go, you, you, you. And to be fair, from what I've seen, from what Spurs have been linked to, um, I think Spurs have watched the video because it looks like now they're about to sign the centre-back I recommended. So, in, there you go. Um, I think that v- verifies what I was my claim, but... Yeah, I think it's all dependent on Spurs. I think Spurs need two new centre-backs. I think Davidson Sanchez is shit, even though I'm pretty sure he scored twice against us, but then was at fault for two goals. What a game. Um, and then <laughs> Toby Alderweireld finally wants out. Fucking who else have they got? Tanganga's young. Eric Dyer. Eric Dyer's shit. Um let 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 let's put it let's put it and I, I remember having this uh, I had this conversation with um t- tapping tobes. Really good Spurs channel. Go and check him out. He's a top, top lad. He really is. I love him. Um, but we have had some heated debates about Everton and Spurs because I will stand here still to this day and say that Everton are a bigger club than Spurs. Yeah. Simple. We are. We've, won, we've won more. Yes, they've got a bigger stadium. Yes, they've got more global revenue right now. But when Everton have a bigger stadium, I, I don't think, I do not think in comparison, Spurs will have had the success that Everton have had over their lifetime that, that I just don't think Spurs will compete with it. Um, and when you look at their team, I actually don't know how Spurs get into the top six every season if you take Harry Kane out of it, irrespective of the money they get, because he generated 70% of their goals last season through either scoring himself or assists. Like, he was the highest assist maker in the Premier League and the highest goal scorer. I don't think that's ever happened in Premier League history. And I personally don't remember a time even before that where people sort of talk about it from the pre-Premier League era. But obviously, no one took stats of the the old first division, which is why we always have this, oh, Premier League's fantastic. And, you know, you won the fucking first division. You won the championship, Everton, not the fucking Premier League. Well, I'll tell you what, you can swivel on all thumbs as well. But for me... If it, the centre back Spurs are signing is exceptional. Like he is a very good centre back, but then we've seen these big centre back signings go wrong. You know, I remember when Manchester City saw Mangala and everyone was screaming about it, and he was horrendous. I remember, you know, when I mean Laporte, Laporte. We we all know Laporte is is on his day one of the best centre backs in the world. But yet Diaz has done a better job than him this season. You know, you could even argue that Stones has done a better job than... So you sort of sit there and you go, I don't know what to expect with Spurs. They've just got Son to sign a new deal. So he, he's not going anywhere. That's big news for them. But it really does depend on where this money's going. Because this is an opportunity for Levy to essentially not spend a penny. He, he, he is not 
spending a penny this summer. He's got his 160 million and he's going to say to Nuno, who do you want? And do you trust Nuno with 160 million pound in one go? No, That's the question. Really. Because you know, even the business they've done, it's a lamella and 25 million euros for Brian Hill, who, don't get me wrong, he's fantastic and he's a really good young player. But, you know, he's like 19, hasn't he? had two good seasons of full football. like, mm. And they're just like, don't get me wrong, getting lamella off the books. You know, the guy who fucking shoots a Rabona better than he shoots a normal shot of the ball. But fucking, it's just, it is... Strange, but I also like the idea that Spurs are signing young players who are only just going to develop because maybe Nuno expects that they're not going to be on the curve with the other teams. So why not mm. get players in that are going to develop and then maybe in three years' time they're on that curve? Because I also think Nuno could get the best out of Deli Ali again. And, you know, then Son, who I, I think Son has potential to be a top scorer in the league. It's just he's never really had his own team, but he's proven he can be the star of Tottenham when he needs he's to be. He's the man, isn't he? He, he? He's is unreal. The now that Kane's going, it looks like he is the man, um, depending on who they're bringing. Because they could even play Son as a nine and then sign another winner yeah. if they wanted this. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the problem with Spurs as well is Nuno likes a three at the back. And I think he proved over his time in Wolves that four at the back and Nuno don't work very well. So maybe no. if he does move to a three at the back, don't get me wrong, if he can keep hold of Irel, then that's good. But Davidson Sanchez is shit. And then... They're going to have to sign another centre back along with Romero because there's no way he's giving Eric Dyer a chance, is there? There's no, no, no way he gives Eric Dyer. He's, he's, he's not quick enough at moving the ball for him. Um, I mean, obviously... although, although to be fair, he, he, he turned Conor Cody into an England international, so it's uh, yeah, it might work. I don't know. Also, Conor Cody know. can pass a ball. I mean, Dyer can pass a ball, it'd be fair to him, but. I don't know. Eric Dyer might become Conor Cody 2.0 and then everyone oh, might go shit. fuck that shit. Everyone Imagine. might go shit. Conor Cody's actually not as good as we thought. Brilliant. And then Nuno will start getting called the best defensive coach in the world, Mourinho 2.0, and then we'll just be like, wait, what the fuck? But, um, Brilliant. Well, let's let's move on. Let's go through them. Come on, let's fly right, right. through these. Who's eight? Okay. Eight. Arsenal. Eight. I actually think Arsenal might have the best chance, you know. Well, I'm actually... ending the video there. Guys, it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> I, you know what, though? They're finally spending money, aren't they? They're finally doing it, it looks like. And don't get me wrong, I have faith in Aubameyang enough that he can turn it around. Lacazette's a good striker. Ben White, they might need another centre. I don't know. Is it official yet with Ben White? It's basically confirmed. It might no. as well be. It's literally Arsenal will be making some big fucking stupid over-the-top video acting like they've signed fucking Paolo Maldini 20 years ago. And it'll be fun. <laughs> have you seen the Smith Row one? They yeah. announced Smith Rowe signing a new contract like they just fucking nabbed Messi. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like the kid, and I think he's a future England international, but Jesus Christ. Oh, it's fucking marvellous. I love it. I absolutely Jeez. love it. Like, they've nabbed Messi. I mean, that, that's got to be clipped, Eddie. <laughs> oh, God, man. My, um, oh, God, my girlfriend's an Arsenal fan as well, so she'll watch that part of the video and go, oh, what do you mean? You fucked it. I mean, we were talking. I mean, we were taking a piss earlier about your airline. You'll come back to the next video. You'd be bored. She'd have took the <laughs> fucking laugh. Mate, I w you know what? It wouldn't been me who shaved it off. She'll have tied me to a chair and shaved it off. Oh, you fucking wish you did that, mate. So you fucking <laughs> wish she tied you to a chair. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, look, Arsenal. I mean, it's difficult for me to say because. You know, I went on Turkish's channel. I went on a few Arsenal... At Lee Gunner, you know, these are channels that have got 50,000 subs. And I basically ripped Arsenal a new one, saying they were really poor. Um, they had no midfield. Defensively, they were all over the place. I, and now I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, that team finished above us. Like, that team genuinely finished above Everton, and who, who were first at one point. I mean, Arsenal are first right now, but that's the only time they're going to be first. I, true. I don't know if Everton can finish... Uh, sorry, I don't know if Arsenal can finish top six this season, but I certainly think they'll probably finish about seventh or something. Yeah, I think it's difficult to figure out, really, isn't it? It all depends on how it works, but I do think if Arsenal are going to continue spending money in the right places, like I do think they are right now, um, and obviously it all depends on when Bellerin leaves, it looks like. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Have they signed a right back to replace him? Yes. Uh, yeah, what's his name? 
Tele. I can't remember. Oh, uh, fucking. Can I actually have the. I don't care about shitty football London news. But, uh, here we go. Uh, they've signed Tavares. I know that. I know they've got Torreira. And so they've got a lot of players they want to sell, to be fair. So they've got even more money coming in than what they're yeah, spending Jack already. Yeah, going in it. Jack is going for pro- they'll probably get about twenty million for him now after mm. his performances in the Euros. But maybe uh, they're good on the wings. I think they're really good on the wings. Actually, Pepe looked like he was finally coming into his own. Saka's yeah. arguably the brightest English talent in the country. Yeah, and I think I don't think he's number one, but I think he's definitely got a case for it. You know, Kieran Tierney, I'd say probably a top five left back in the league, maybe top three on his day. But he's got like legs made of cheese. Uh, that Tavares looks like a good option. I don't know. I think it all depends on Arteta this time, really. I, I it, think it, it, if if Arsenal are doing well, um, if Arsenal are doing well come January, Arteta won't get sacked. If he isn't, he'll get sacked. I think this is Michael Beck season for Arteta. It is. I like Arteta too. So I don't want him to get sacked, but no. I, think he's a bit, I think he's an arrogant knobhead, but I like him. Yeah. yeah. So no, he's a he's a good knobhead. <laughs> he's, a, he's a he's a knobhead we'll accept because he played in blue for a while. Yeah, there you go. Like, right. So after that is <laughs> this is uh-huh. probably oh no this isn't going to be the longest part of the video next because it's Leeds next because we even finished below them. Yeah, this will make Connor happy on one Leeds where we talk about Leeds in detail and I'll start with Leeds. Um, I. Leeds are a conundrum because there is no doubt they have some exceptional footballers. You know, the, the, you know they have got some exceptional footballers. They've got Bamford, who's a goal scorer, can create assists. They've got a midfield that is hard working with a little bit of flair. And th- that's not even talking about their main man, who I'm sure you'll come on to in a minute, so I'm not going to mention his name. Then defensively, whoever came into that centre-back position worked hard. Goalkeepers did fine. Certainly when they had Meslier, the other goalkeeper for them was Pants. Um, Then you've got right-back, who is more than capable of going up and down all season in ailing. Leeds are a good side. The only thing I question about Leeds, and and this isn't, again, it's not a dig, but I I question how big a jump they can make this season because teams tend to struggle second season anyway. They'll be found out a little bit more. It gives managers more time to look at the way they play, which is really weird. Like, if you watch Leeds, they, they sort of are really constructive in breaking teams down with pace. Jack Harrison signing permanently. Big signing for them, in my opinion. I, I sort of don't know what I expect from Leeds, but I sort of think they're going to finish where they are now. Like I, I think they'll finish between, say, 9th and 11th, 12th. Because as much as I think Leeds can go forward, I do think they need one season to sort of stabilise where they are in the Premier League, if you get what I mean, and not do a, not do a, a Norwich where they come up. They seem to do really well. But then they would fall apart, and and I just question Leeds whether they're going to be able to, to do that this season. Some Leeds fans will say you're talking out your ass, Mark, and I get it. Like I understand Leeds could arguably challenge the top six this season with the right signings, and they and they're making some good moves. It's not like they're signing shit players; they've been linked with some good good players. But I question, I question whether they're going to get there this season coming. Yeah, it's a big, difficult situation, obviously, including can they handle two seasons of that match? I mean, don't get me wrong, they've been playing that Bielsa style for years now. Yeah. But eventually, I think it will catch up with them and it's got to. But even the signings they've made, like you said, Jack Harrison, they've brought Junior Theopold from Barcelona, who is a fantastic player. It's just difficult when you've got to play behind Jordi Alba and you sell the left back who's got potential to be better than him. But um, yeah, so. It, it is, it is. But we've seen it at Wolves, for example, Samada. I thought he was a good right back, and actually he hasn't cut it in the Premier League. Yeah, but I think if Samedo played for Leeds, it'd be a different story. I think Bielsa yeah. just naturally Bielsa gets the transfer value out of you at least, and then sells yeah, you for yeah. a profit. 
So I think it's I think Firpo will work hard. I think he knows why he joined the Bielsa system. And in the NBL so he's probably a top three coach in the league, isn't he? He's ridiculous. Yeah. The, the influence he has on people around him, you know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of the big hipster movement around Marcelo Bielsa and how good he is, but in the end, you have got to appreciate how good he is as a coach, what he's done with a Leeds team that when he joined was mid table championship and he's now mid table Premier League and only what? Let's have a look. Fr- three six years points hmm. off actual Europe and three points off Mickey Mouse Europe. So it's you know it's not a bad thing really to be Leeds, but it's just can they improve? Is Patrick Bamford gonna continue to improve with you know last season having the most big chances missed in the Premier League? Is he gonna put them away this time round? They've got fantastic players like Rafinha, who I think is an absolute steal for Leeds. Yeah, I do think he's one of, already one of the better wingers in the Premier League. The guy's fantastic yep. to watch. Leeds are fantastic to watch in general. Uh, I do think they probably have to make a few signings, maybe still. Maybe I do like Click, but maybe replace Click with someone like I mentioned, like a Joe Willock from Arsenal or something. A, mm. That model of player who can really get forward, but can also put the pressure on too. You just yeah, yeah. you need to have a really high gas tank to play for Leeds. And to be fair to him, it looked like they had, Bielsa had found a way to ha- make them have their little mid-season mm. drop instead of the end of the season. Instead, yeah. what did they win? Eight of their last nine games or something stupid like that? Yeah, yeah. To end up, you know, finishing above us, to, above Villa. You know, I said Leeds will finish 14th, 13th. So for them to finish in the top 10, con- I know it's not by many points-wise, but convincingly, in my opinion, yeah. convincingly being a top 10 team in the yeah, league. Well, this, is, this is a team that, that went to the Etihad and won. You know, what What did Everton do? We we went to the Etihad, rolled over, and let our belly get rubbed. I mean, we, we this is a team that's got some got some grit and some fight. And, and equally, by the way, they went to the Etihad and won, and they had 10 men for 40 minutes or something, if I remember. This is this is a lead side that are very, very capable of beating anyone on their day. It's the consistency they struggled with last season. They were, they were not great at home. They were better away, a bit, bit like us. But they were better at home than we were. Um, they beat us at our place. We beat them at their place. But Leeds are, as I say, Leeds are, are a conundrum. And I just don't know what to expect from them. Yeah, I think Leeds are the hardest team to predict. Because Leeds could massively jump, but then they could also fall off a cliff. I, I don't think Leeds will finish in the top six. And, that, no, and that's I... the premise of this video. I do not think Leeds can finish top six. But what I do think they can do, he solidify or slightly go ahead of where they were and next season challenge for six. I really I really think they could do that with Bielsa. I really do think with the right signings over the next two years, Leeds can really challenge because they've already sh- they've already shown they've gone from a team that finished I don't did they win the championship if you remember? Yeah, yeah, they won. Yeah, they did, yeah. So they won the championship and he and he essentially got them eleven further places. So you can't you cannot knock Bielsa at all. And there is genuinely the ceiling's Champions League football because there's no way in hell Leeds are going to get there in the next two years. But can they get top six? Well, if Leicester can, Leicester have proven to a lot of teams that you can literally be close to relegation. Winning titles and challenging for Europe season in season out by one season. So, why can't they? Yeah, so, oh, moving on to the next club, Mike. Moving on to the next team. You know who it is next. This is probably th- going to be the longest section in the video because there's going to be a lot of fucking complaining in this part. And it's the I- part where both of us know equally too. So, probably the longest part. I'm going to start with the positives and then with the negatives. You're more than welcome to fucking chip in here whenever you like, man. You, you, this is this is a, a, a debate between two Everton fans, so you crack on. If you think I'm talking shit, you tell me. Everton defensively last season were not as good as people made out. We weren't. We, we were solid in games where we could go 1-0 up and we could we could win by clean sheets. And we did. We, we got a few clean sheets. So, look. That on that premise, Everton were decent defensively. But every single time Everton tried to attack a team last season, we would concede shitloads of goals. We we conceded something like 14 goals in our first seven games, but we're still top of the league. 
Calvert Lewin scored 14 goals in his first 10 games or something, and then only scored something like seven in the in the subsequent 20 or something like that. So Everton had this real issue last season of sort of knowing their identity. Were they an attacking team? Were they a defensive team? And and as a result, at the end of the season, you had so many fans completely split on what style of football to play. Like some people were saying, we've got to go defensive. We've got to win these games 1-0. And towards the end of the season, when that wasn't working, teams were going, certainly at home, teams were going, we need to attack players. We don't need to play two centre-backs against, uh, two centre-midfielders, defensive centre-midfielders against teams like Sheffield United. And I agreed with that. But stability-wise, Everton was shit. Like, we were either really good at forward or, or really good defensively and shit on the other way around. It was horrendous. Jordan Pickford, the start of the season uh, was was okay. He definitely made some mistakes. I was more than happy for him to be linked with a move away in January. He come good. He, he, he absolutely come good. And, and touch what he comes back from the Euros and he's got that mindset that he wants to be fantastic for Everton and, and that's what we want. We don't need him coming back like he did after the World Cup, really cocky and arrogant. So that's that's that. We can't spend unless we sell. And that's because of financial fair play. That's because of Steve Walsh, Ronald Koeman, Sam Allardyce, and a little bit, and, and fans don't like me saying this, and a little bit of Marcel Brands. He doesn't get away with this. £28 million on Iwobi. A massive salary. Fabian Dalf, 100 grand a week. I sort of understand Delph. Bernard, 130 grand a week. You know, Everton have had these players that have just not been good enough. And and actually, I've been able to see it. You have probably been able to see it before these players come in. Um, they have not been good enough. And, and that's not going to change. So Everton have got a core group of players that are shithouses and are, and are either just there for the money or are there because it's Everton Football Club and we are perceived in some circles, I wouldn't say loads of circles, but we are perceived to be a fairly big club. We haven't won anything in 30-odd years, like, but we are a fairly big club. So, for me, this is an absolute, like... This is going to be the toughest season we're going to watch in years, in my opinion. I really do think Rafa Benitez has come in to get rid of the Deadwood, get the players playing for the shirt again, and to grind out shit wins. Like, I'm really not looking forward to the football. I'm not looking forward to... I, I'm not... I'm not. I'm certainly not looking forward to the recruitment this summer. Like, this, is, this summer has been a mess. And I'm not... I like Damari Gray. I like Andros Townsend and I like Begovic. They all are good working professionals. But you can't tell me any of those players walk into a top six side. And if Everton want to be a top six side, we are far off that mark, unfortunately. Yeah, I think the problem is a lot of our fans have illusions of grandeur. And uh, the ones who are going to go in the comments and get offended by this are the ones who have the illusions of grandeur. But I did... Oh, it's did, not 1985 all... anymore. We're not a big club and, anymore. And the, this is the issue I, I have. Like, I I believe Everton are a big club. Uh, but you, but you, as you rightly say, Cal, we haven't won anything in 27 years. What right do I have to go Everton are a big club? What right do I say that Everton are a bigger club right now than Leicester? I don't. You... I think the point's there because obviously you've got to take history into account in ev everything. But I also think the problem with Everton is right now, recency bias is a massive thing. Like I'm not going to storm around saying Everton are a big club because we won a bunch of trophies when my dad was 10 years old. You know what I mean? It's just, I do think the thing with Everton is it's a sleeping giants thing. Yes. It's, it's a lot of history. It's a new big stadium and there's a lot of money. Like obviously FFP have caught up to us, but we still have a lot of money. If FFP wasn't around, what did Brand say? Two hundred? No, Mashiri. Was it two hundred, three hundred million mm. that we had available for this season? But obviously, FFP has bent us over royally. But I think we've got the right gaffer in for the job right now. Because if someone would have told me 
if we would have signed Graham Potter, for example, I'd have been like, yeah, exciting football. Yeah, let's go. And then we'd have been like, oh, we've got you ain't got anything to spend. And don't get me wrong, Graham Potter doesn't have bags to spend at Brighton, but at least he knows the finances are going to be there if he needs them. They're about to spend yeah. 20 million on Hudson Edward. We probably won't spend 20 million on a player this summer. I mean, saying that we're going to sign Harry Winks for 25 million, but. Yeah, that's bollocks. Oh, that's, 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 completely, that's complete bollocks. <laughs> It's, oh, that's, that's what, that's what that's I said. Not I, happening. They want twenty-five million. Is the rumor? They want it. Doesn't mean they're going to get it. But it's, it's all right. We want thirty-five million for Tom Davies. Huh? We want thirty-five million for Davies. One hundred and fifty for Richarlison. Mm, and give, you know, give me seventy million pounds for Wobie, please. Look, seventy million. I think you're underrating him there massively. Sorry. But, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, I think with Everton, it's just a massive ho- overhaul to massive wages. Because in the end, to be fair to Brands, I can see most of the signings. Why? I don't see why he paid Iwobi so much off the bat. He panicked, didn't he? Deep... He panicked because I... he couldn't get Zaha. Part... Do you know what I'd have preferred if we'd, have... If we'd have waited till January? I yeah. know we'd have stunk, but we'd have got Zaha. Yeah, yeah. We would have for about 45 million. I mean, I wouldn't pay that now. I wouldn't pay close to that now. I'm no. sorry, but he's 30 now, but... That's it. I know, obviously, everyone's going to go, oh, they're going to make some stupid, shitty excuse about how oh, that's like a FIFA thing. He's a winger. We're not signing a centre-back. We're signing a winger who's going to lose his person if we sign I, Zaha. I, I also think as well, um, I'm sort of digressing a little bit, but that Crystal Palace already know that because they've gone and signed Michael Elise from, from Reading, who, uh, you know, they've... <laughs> If you actually look at the players that they've got in those wide or aggressive that positions, is there, Pal- Palace has got got some real quality players there. Like they really have. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Zaha. I, I think actually he's gonna think he's going to move up front. I think he's going to be fully moved to na- to as he, a nine. He has. He wanted to play European football. He wanted to play for big clubs, and and Palace. Although you can't hold it against them. I wonder, I wonder where we could have been if he'd have left two years ago. Like, I wonder he, where he, we would have been if we signed him. Well, this, well, that's the fucking thing, isn't it? I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, we've done it, we've done it season in season out. We should have signed, we should have signed Zaha when we signed Balassa. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck was that about? Um, the worst part about Balassi, man, is the only good thing he brought for me were good Everton cards on FIFA. That was the only thing that we spent thirty million on. Good FIFA cards for fuck's sake, mm. man. Powerful, fast, but he, he's shooting. I mean, I, I, I've got nothing against Belassi, and I actually quite like the way he'd interact with the fans on Twitter and whatever. He Sometimes still does he now as well. Yeah, but he, he 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 couldn't shoot, man. I mean, he couldn't shoot. I mean, honestly, his shooting rating on FIFA should have been fucking zero. It was horrendous. If there was a stand in front of him. And that was the goal. He'd managed to still put it wide. It's he managed to get the ball over the park end into the fucking car park. I don't know how he did it. I, and the worst part is he's not the player with the worst end product we've had. He's not. He will be worse. Yeah, because well, the, I, and that's and that that because the thing, that's my thing is with it will be right. Is I do like it will be. He's fun to watch because in the end. I don't know if you remember it. It was a, it was either a cup game or a league game right near the end of it. And Iwobi takes it up to the left wing and about four players try to tackle him and he skins all four of them at once. Yeah, yeah. Takes all four of them on at once and does every single one of them in. Yeah. And then you just like, the cross is going out, the cross is going here. I the- think one thing that would massively benefit Everton is a right back who can really swing him in. Because then it might not even be a bad idea for reward, but it come off the bench, beat about four players off the dribble. Then all he has to do is roll it back to the right back who swings one in. The 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 funniest thing with Iwobi is as a ball carrying player, he can do that job. Like he genuinely, he's a bit headless chicken at times, but genuinely, as a ball carrying player who can beat a man, uh, you would possibly argue that he's actually the best in the Everton squad. I don't, I don't, he's a dribbler I, by a mile. Yeah, exactly. He's a dribbler. Like he dribbles more than a than a baby eating its dinner wearing a bib. Like the guy can dribble. But what I'm 
what I'm saying is at the end of that dribble, just like you've rightly said, I've seen him beat three players. Me go, oh my God, Iwobinio is back on a live stream with John. Because we bigged him up. We were there buzzing. Oh, everything fucking way. And he literally, literally made a four-yard pass to a Wolves player. Like, literally, he did everything about. right. No, and he passed. Not. And I stood there. And you, you, how can you go from being up here to being down here in six fucking seconds? And that's that. That look, I, I, I mean, we're going to have more end prod. And I said this in my video, so I'm giving you a little little hint for later, guys. But I said this in the video earlier that I pre-recorded before this one. When Everton are signing a 31-year-old. Andros Townsend on a free transfer to deliver more than a 27-year-old £35 million transfer from Arsenal, you know you have a problem. And Andros Townsend last season got two goals and six assists. He won't be got one goal and one assist. And that is not good enough. Not for the money. I mean, not for any team. I, I think he will be suits better being dropped back. You know, I think he is a wing-back. I think stick, he is. A, stick him at right back. I think he is Don't. a wing back. If he wants to play a free at the back, you know what? I'll take him at wing back because they're the best games he had all season. Because all he had to do was progress the ball and then literally pass it sideways to someone and let someone it, else do the job. I've got a question for you then. Based on the, on the Benitez, that, that obviously you analyse a lot. So I'm assuming potentially that you, you've analysed this. Although, to be fair, I'm putting you on the spot. What do you suspect Benitez would do? With what with Iwobi or with the squad with, with Everton, like we, you know, come come the first game of the season against Southampton. What do you think he'll do? I think we have to attack him. So and do you think? He'll, I've, so I've do you think, think he'll play five or four, four or three? If you get what I mean, four. He's going to play four. I think he's going to. I think he's going to be play a four-two-three-one, maybe right. a four-three-three, and I think it will be uh, the right back whoever we sign. Oh, I think it'll be Coleman first game of the season. But I don't yeah. mind that. I don't mind Coleman starting games in the season. He's still got it. He's still good enough to play. He's just not good enough to... Well, he's not. He's good enough. He just doesn't have the legs to play a full season. It depends season. who plays in front of him because if you, if you when we've seen it, when Hamas Rodriguez played in that three in front of him and no disrespect to Gomez, to Correa, or Allen, they're certainly better defensively tracking back on the left-hand side of the pitch. I know it sounds stupid, but I almost felt that Coleman at the start of the season was overexposed because Hamish Rodriguez would drag into the middle and wouldn't track back on the right-hand yeah. side. I also think with Coleman, you've got to put Godfrey on his side if you play him. Yeah. You've got to have Godfrey as the centre-back. Kind of like how Van Dijk screens Alexander-Arnold. Yeah. Like, I'm not comparing Godfrey to Van Dijk. Fucking hell, you should do. You should do, because <laughs> Godfrey's going to be the fucking... Dogs bollocks, it's going to be unreal, but honestly, besides Ferdinando 8 and John Terry 05, this is the best centre back I've ever seen in the Premier League. And I hate to say it. I hate to say it. Oh, I, I won't say it. I, trust me. Trust me. I've done a video on this before. I, I predicted Liverpool. I fucking hate saying this. I predicted Liverpool would win the league when they signed Allison and then they signed Van Dijk because they completed the jigsaw. I just remember Van Dyke scoring against us in his debut, the prick, in the FA yeah. Cup. Yeah. And we but you just I, knew what was going to happen. Every blue I, knew it. But what... what? And I think you're right. Godfrey should screen Coleman. If he, play, if, he, if he plays four at the back... I'll tell you what, i tell you what. Obviously, there might be some signings, so there, there might be a few gaps in this. Tell me you're starting eleven. Yeah, so I'm gonna use signings that I think we should make as well. So this go is on, full then. strength for Charles and back from the Olympics or the Southampton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Right, Pickford in goal, Dumfries right back, Godfrey Mina centre back, Dinier left back, Decore, Alan, Hammers in the ten, Richarlison on the left. Uh, I'm gonna say Leon Bailey because I think his agent's drumming up interest and make us pay him more when we sign him and Carver lewin up front, and then obviously with the possibility of both wingers being interchanged. If I had to say first game of the season, it would obviously be uh, Towns and Gray instead, which I don't mind, to be honest with you. And then, uh, yeah, but I think 
it's a good starting eleven, and I do like that. I can say it's a good starting eleven, and with a few more tweaks, it's a good squad because I think we've got good backup centre backs. I think we've got even if we just kept Kenny, I think he's a decent backup right back. Mm-hmm. But obviously, having Coleman as a backup right back is unreal. Um, and Kunku as a backup left back, I think he needs a loan spell. Even though I would he's like not, him, he's, he's not. He's not in Florida, so I suspect he'll be going out on loan. And then Thierry Small, he's gone. He's gone. I mean, I, I hope we don't put him over in Kunku because he's got more potential. But in Kunku's not far off even potential wise. I, I think in Kunku should play as a winger. I think he should, but at the same time, Digne is kind of a winger in it. Yeah, I think I think Unconku from everything we t- I I think it's unfair to criticize Unconku for the last game of the season. Um because I certainly think he should have played a bit more than he did last season actually. Um but when we saw Unconku early on, he looked phenomenal. Like he looked in those league cup games. Outrageous. Um and and people will say he didn't do it in the Premier League against Newcastle when he started. I do get that. Um but we can't I, I hate it when we give these kids just one chance and we, you know, look what happened to Luckman. Luckman was probably Fulham's best player last... Well, he was up there as one of Fulham's best players and last now Palace looked like they're going to sign him as well. Yeah, exactly. So, Luckman, Luckman, Luckman is prime example to me of a player that should have played more. And I can understand why he had a bad attitude because he was frustrated at not playing. I get why Unkonku might want to play more games. But you don't hear from him. Whereas Thierry Small, you do hear from him. And bearing in mind he's 16, 17 years old, you don't expect that. So as as mad as this is going to sound, I have fuck all problem with him going. Because he has no right to be playing first team football with Luca Dean above him. He's got to earn it. And he hasn't earned it yet. He's only been training with the first team on a handful of occasions. You know what, though? If I were ever earned... I'd hand him the biggest fuck you possible and put a buyback clause in his contract. Yeah, so would I. And then, do you know, honestly, because I do, I don't know, he's 16. We can't be comparing him to anyone yet because he's fucking 16. Exactly. He could snap his ankle next week, God forbid, and not ever be able to play football again. You know, we don't, obviously, touch wood, I hope that doesn't happen to him. He's a bit of an arrogant knobhead, but hmm. he's 16. I kind of expect it. He's a kid. But, yeah. uh, so I just I think. How often do you hear 16-year-olds saying they want more first-team football? In 2021, where everyone's got to have an opinion. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not. I, I like him. As a footballer, I like him. What I saw in the under-23s, even what I saw when he, when he made that cameo, when he come on and he's become the youngest ever Everton player, like, I like him. But I I don't like his attitude. If he was coming out with these comments at 18, 19 years old, I probably couldn't argue as much. But he's 16. Yeah. Well, it, his aim should be, I want to train with the first team. I want to get on the bench occasionally. Not, I want first team football. And, and yeah. from the comments I've read, that appears to be what he's saying. You know what as well? I wouldn't even mind if he was saying, oh, I want to go out on loan to get first team football. You want to go to Arsenal to get first team football. You want to go to Man United. Mate, you're looking at left backs who you aspire to be as good as. You're not better than them already. He's he's not getting he's not getting in. Uh, he's not getting into any Premier League team. I, I I mean, is it is it Leeds that have signed? Um, yeah, Fapo. No, who's the other? Who's Oh, Jack, uh, the Chelsea lad, Jack Price. No, d- no Man, U- Man United had a right back who played a few times this season, but it's not sure. Uh, Dallas. He's good. No. Diego- Williams. Williams. Right, Williams has gone somewhere on loan, I think. And I rate Williams. I'm sure he's gone to Leeds. I'm sure he's gone to Leeds. No, um... Southampton wanted him really badly. No, he's still at United. Leeds have just signed Fairpo from Barca and a young well, small, lad from Chelsea. S- small doesn't get in over Williams, so he he's not even going to get on the bench. So, look, I, I don't know. I don't know. We've digressed enough on Everton. We've digressed enough. But what I'm selling you, and I'll give you my straight opinion, 
I think Everton finish eighth this season. I think we finish seventh. And I think yeah. that is Rafa Benitez working a little bit of the magic that he has to just grind wins out and to, to improve us. I think we finish seventh because I think one of the clubs around us is going to absolutely fall apart. But we're going on to the last team now, and ironically, the team that actually might have the best chance of getting top six. And it's Aston Villa. Aston Villa are a very strange one because they've come up to the Premier League and just made so many smart signings that none of us really expected Aston Villa to be making, you know. The same Aston Villa that had Jolien Lescott at centre-back tweeting pictures of his car from his pocket and stuff like that. You know, yeah. the same team that had um, every, a young Irish lad who's turned into one of England's best players. You know, it's kind of... It's a difficult situation to judge with Villa, but bringing in Buendia, mm-hmm. Ashley Young, you know, keeping Grealish, it looks like, you know, and then possibly just being pricks and taking Leon Bailey from us as well. They might have one of the best attacks in the league next year. Let's Let's... I made a statement last season. I made a statement last season and I stand by it this season. Everton were first, Villa was second. Everyone was comparing it to the, uh, you know, the, yeah. If you look at the Villa midfield, man for man, I still think they have a better midfield than Everton. I like, um, I like Douglas Louise. Yeah, I like, I like McGinn. They've got better depth um, than us as well. I, I like obviously Grealish. Morgan then they've Sam. got a guard. Um, Everton, although I forgot to mention it in the video yesterday, have been linked with marvelous Macamba. And and a lot of people will sit here and go, as you your reaction, a lot of people will say he's not good enough to get into that Villa side. I've watched him play several times, and his break up play with a ball. As for for a Villa side when he's played and not been injured, is as good as Garner's. And I, and 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 I know people will sit here. At, you probably are sitting there going, "What the fuck are you?" On I know about you it? you have got me there. I, he was but best it, defensive midfielder in the league besides Kante. I, I'm I'm not saying he was. Like, I'm not sitting there saying he's better than Garner. I'm not saying that. But oh, what I'm fine. saying is, as just the ability to tackle a man, he's got as much energy and as much drive. As Garner did in an Everton shirt, but but what but got what Garner could do, which he doesn't appear to be able to do, is he can step out with the ball as well. You know, he can carry that ball ten or fifteen yards. He can make that pass to somebody. He can. Macamba can't do that. He can't do it. He can tackle. He can be a tackle merchant all he likes. But if he gives the ball away every two seconds, it's not going to work. But he can tackle. One of the things that he sort of reminds me of, and again, you are. And everyone is going to sit there and go, Mike, you are chalking complete shit. Is when I think it was the England manager at the time, it might even have been Allardyce, said that the best retrieving ball tackling player in the England squad was Danny Welbeck. I mean, that England squad it actually doesn't even surprise me. No, it, no, it doesn't. What I'm saying is, this is a, this is genuinely a guy who can tackle, but he. It's whether he can do everything else. Now, look, I don't think Everton should sign him. I'm not sitting here saying Everton should sign him. But what I'm saying is, look at the depth that they've got when they've got players like that behind. Then you've got the wings where they've got... It, well, I mean, they've got the lad from Leon. I can't, we were linked with him. I can't remember his name off top. Oh, Bertrand. Bertrand. Right. Yeah, true, all right. They've got uh, Trezor, uh, Trezeguet, Agazi, whatever you call him, on the left-hand side. Then they've got... A goal scorer in Ollie Watkins, who all round game up there. I think he's a very complete footballer. It's um, up I there. Think, he's one I of the best he, complete uh, forwards in the league. I I, I think he's certain. And this, again, I'm going to get shot for this. I think he's more complete than DCL because yeah. I think Ollie Watkins can score one on ones, whereas DCL just fucking can't. I mean, he just can't. We've seen it now for four years. He can't. Then, if you look at the centre backs, Mings as a left back, as a left centre back, solid. You've got, in my opinion, an even better centre back in Konza, who I, I highly rate. 
You've got Targi, who looks a completely different player from his Southampton days. He, he genuinely looks like a very, very good le- left back. And they've got Matty Cash, who is he must be the most underrated right back in this league, in my opinion. Then a goalkeeper who cost twenty million, and now Arsenal are trying to sign Fingy from Sheffield United for thirty. It's an, it's honestly, it's fantastic to see. I mean, you're there talking about money they're spending. Look at that. 30 million on fucking rat. Do you know why it is? It's because he made up there for the most saves. And it's what I said to someone when they were trying to say fucking... Someone on my Twitter was trying to say Sam Johnston was better than Pickford. I swear to fucking God. And I went, just because he made, has had to do more doesn't make him better. Because I, then, don't have that just... logic, Edison is the worst keeper in the Premier League. And can I also say, just based on that, um, I had exactly the same conversation when we signed Jordan Pickford from Sunderland. Of course, you look good when you have to stop 150 shots per game. Yeah. Um, fucking Sam Johnston, man, he's a good keeper. He's Premier League quality, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm going, Sam Johnston, and he's a good number three for England. Mm. But and, but then, fucking hell, better than the guy who's just... I don't give a shit what people say about Donnarumma. Jordan Pickford was the best goalkeeper at that tournament. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he was. He should have got the. He should have got the golden glove. He should. He should have got it. Donnarumma but... was more impactful, which means yeah, deserves the player of the tournament. Fine, if England had won it, Sterling would have got it. But fucking, oh, it just it irritates me. But in the end, it's just with Villa, like you said, and I'll let you finish what you're going to say in a second. Sorry for interrupting you, but they've just signed. They've got the goalkeeper who has just helped. Won the man of the match award, I think. To help Messi win his first international tournament. And that goalkeeper plays for Aston Villa. The second choice to Lena. I can't believe that. The same um, dude who fumbled Richarlison and shot through his leg. And, and, and as much as we all sit there and we're saying all of this, the manager ha- also doesn't get the credit from Villa because Dean Smith has put that team together. He he is the one that is in control of, of, I believe it's transfers. I don't think they have a director of football. Look, they might do. I'm not 100% certain. But he's put that team together and they are very good. The only thing you would say is when they don't have Grealish, they are a completely different Side and I don't think as much as I rate Boom and Dia, like I would have took Boom and Dia in a heartbeat. Like I rate him, he's not as complete as Jack Grealish is, no. in my opinion. And again, I'm going to get shot for this. Jack Grealish is the most complete footballer in the Premier League, and that includes De Bruyne. No, nah, mate, you're fucking waffling now. I can't let you say that. I cannot let you. Serious? I, mate, I can't let you. <laughs> that. You're serious? Fuck me. Jesus. I'm serious. Uh, I'm telling. I am telling you now. I believe if you stick Jack Grealish into a Manchester City side, I genuinely believe he would be their best player. No, man. And I if can't he uh, and if he's their best player, then he's. I, I I'm not saying De Bruyne is bad. Like, I've, I've not obviously not. But I ju- I just think Grealish is absolutely brilliant at everything like the guy can tackle he can get fouls he can shoot he can beat people like the guy could probably i mean just stick him in fucking goal for a game let me see if he can if he could go oh, well. then he'll do it and then it'll fuck it, and then we'll be like oh fuck sake i'm just all i'm saying is jack Grealish, as highly rated as he is i still don't think he's rated high enough no, just my opinion. He's one of the best players in the league. Like, not one of the best attackers. He's one of the best players overall. And that, imagine that. Imagine. But that's what I'm years... saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's, one, I'm... he's a, a more. He, I don't see De Bruyne tracking back and putting tackles in in his own 18 yard box. I've seen no, Jack Grealish do it. it. No, it's it, not. It's not. You're right. But that's why Jack Grealish is so integral to Aston Villa. And and look. Maybe if you get Jack Grealish out of Villa, stick him in Man City and tell him, look, you've only got to go with forwards. You haven't got to defend. Maybe he's half the player De Bruyne is. Fair enough, and I'll put my hands up. But at this moment in time, 
I will go as far as saying for their football club, Jack Grealish is the most important player for their football club out of any player in any football club. So that also means I'm saying that he is more important to Villa than Zaha is to Palace. He's yeah. Calvert Lewin is less important to Everton as do you get what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. saying in the Premier in the Premier League, definitely, because obviously Eze's took the role as the key Palace player now. So exactly. It, exactly. Yeah, that without don't get me wrong, I think that's why they've signed Buendia as a just in case City come and offer us a hundred million. Because I think with Grealish leaving Villa, it's gonna be not like Delph. It's gonna be yeah. like we don't Villa fans are gonna be like, Yeah, we don't deserve you at our club. It'll be like I'm trying to think of a player with us, Lukaku, where we just were like, yeah, you've got Arteta. to leave. Arteta, we did it with Arteta. Look, we, we almost, it, and you, you wrote with Lukaku, we almost had to say, fair enough. Oh, I, I, love, I loved Arteta, man. So that did team. I, so did I. That, that uh, team. Gen, gen, yeah, that team, Yakubu, Kale, Arteta, Pinar, Leighton Baines in form, Jaggy Alka, Lescott, Howard, 2007 2008 was the best Everton team I have ever seen. Andy Johnson as a backup striker. I I mean that was the best Everton team as a as a unit I've ever ever seen. You can argue the first season with Martinez. I think you can argue that team. Yeah, we were still a bit we were still a bit shambolic defensively. We just scored more than others. Well, we it, co- it ended up costing us fourth place. I'll never forget the game. I Crystal have Palace Crystal pa- No, it was by seven. Was it? This is what, what people... was, it? was it 14 15? Yeah, it was we finished fifth by seven points. We finished on 72. Arsenal finished on 79. But with oh, five games to go, time. with five games to go, we were a game in hand on them and a one point and a one point advantage. And the game was Crystal Palace, which was a rearranged game from February where the roof had blown off Goodison because there'd been like a hurricane in Liverpool. If you remember, the game was called off. And remember we, we lost 4-1. We lost 4-1. And the reason why I remember that game is because I paid for my dad to have the top corporate hospitality package for his 50. <laughs> and we and we went and we, we sat in the director's box and that. I bet you wish you did that for the United game instead. Well, this, is, this was the thing. You know, we ended up losing 4-1. We made Jason Punchin look like the second coming of Messi. And we completely fell apart. And... That Everton team, Barkley, Lukaku, Delefeu, Morales, was a fucking hell of a side. But it, it crumbled at the end. And you, you'll see the stats now. I'm sure you've looked at the league table. And you can see, yeah. well, Arsenal finished on 79 points. We finished on 72. And I've never forgot it. It really hurt me that season. No, it was. It was, was it? No, it was one point, Mike. I thought it was. We bought... Because what we did was we lost to Palace One point. And, then beat, and then beat United on the last day of the season, 2-0. What, what's, we, it, what season are you on about? For Martinez is first, 13-14. Oh, wait, this is match week 37, so can no, I go on match it, week 38? Oh, match week 40, I might be wrong, I might be wrong. Why does it put me at match week 37? What the fuck? League... T- Wait a minute. Here we go. Yeah, there you go. It had me on match week 37 for some reason. Yeah, you're right. Am I, am I right? Seven points. It was, yeah. We, we, lo- we lost We lost 3-0 to Southampton. Yeah, and then on last day of the season, we fucking beat Hull, but what good were that? That Will that have been Marco Silva's Hull as well? Oh, I think he's disconnected. Oh, no, that's it. I think we... Oh, I think it, that's the... I am, I am. Is, I'm am. <laughs> so, so that's so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, honest to honest to God, horrendous. that sums up what Everton season is going to be perfectly. That sums it up, right? But yeah, that does. since we're at the end now, we've sat and complained how Villa are miles better than us. Um, what order did you think it's going to go, or what from least to most likely for top six? Spurs six, if not higher. Um, 
Villa seventh. Arsenal or Everton eighth or ninth. I think there's very little in it. Leeds to follow, West Ham to follow. Then I don't. Go on, then. Oh, what's yours? I do. I try to be bold and say Villa sixth. Oh, Arsenal six, Villa seven, Everton eight. Oh, where? You're chucking Spurs out. No, fuck that. I've just realised, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I think losing Harry Kane's just going to, they're going to fall apart. Because I think now, I think, ah. Uh... Do you know what? No, no. Do you know what? I'm backing them. I'm changing my mind to last second. Spurs, Villa, Everton, Arsenal, and. Uh, Leeds, West Ham, because you know what? The more and more I think about it, I just think Arsenal are going to crumble, and I just don't feel like Aubameyang or Lacazette are going to get the goals they need. The more I think about it, mm, fair enough. Right, guys, look, we're gonna we are going to leave it there. An hour and six minutes. This video, we have we've gone in depth more than ever. Um, however, um, I love these videos because it's just a chat. Like we we just talk about it. Um, we were going to talk about Fantasy League and players, but I don't think we've really done nah, that. But, we'll, do, but next, we'll do a full but, episode on it. Yeah, we'll do an episode on it next week. So, yeah, I mean, uh, that was pick of the prem. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's good for me to, to, to finally do a face-to-face video with Cal, although we're not face-to-face via fucking stream yards. Um, but, yeah, guys, we'll leave it there. And uh, remember, vote for me. Peace. See you later, guys. <laughs>